Apparently also Flintstones, because I, I looked on your Wikipedia, <laughs> which I assume is true. And there were, there's... Here's your mistake. Yeah, everything I read. So uh, Gravelberry, the Gravelberry Pie, I, I looked up on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, the, like, the Gravelberries is a band, and the Gravelberry Pie was our newsletter. Okay, yeah. and then you got, did you get that from the Flintstones? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so so what that comes from is I, I, I wanted to call the band um, something to do with the Flintstones at some point. And, you know, actually it was the Paul Myers band. And believe it or not, I, I'm such a fair player that uh, the band kind of had a minor mutiny. They said, why don't we have a band name instead of calling it the Paul Myers band? And I said, oh, okay, sure. And I actually <laughs> thought it would actually be kind of because then it's, then it's, it's, I don't know, people like bands, you know, people like they like things that have a, a group name. I was writing all the songs. I was a lead singer and all that stuff. But I thought, yeah, let's do this. So I said, let's let's have it be a name that's like something from the Flintstones. So we went through like there was an episode where they have an Uncle Tex, and then, and Uncle Tex was the name for about five seconds, literally at a table. That sounds good, Uncle Tex. No, it's too weird. We're not Texas rock or anything. So then, um, how about uh, you know? The Wilma Lovers or something like that. No, that's too, you know, that's a joke you say once and you never say it again. But then I thought I like what I call power pop, which is rough and sweet and gravel and berry. I remember the Gravelberry Pie King episode where Fred Fred takes Wilma's Gravelberry Pies and sells tries to sell them. And I don't know if you remember the episode as well as I do, but he <laughs> he uh, find, he does a bad deal with Mr. Safestone. And uh, and the deal is that he gets like a dollar a pie, but they cost a dollar fifty to make. And he's and he's so excited that he gets a deal that he re doesn't realize they're losing fifty cents on every pie. And so then he says, "Take it or leave it," to Mr. Safestone because he wants a raise. And then and Safestone says, "Well, I I'll I'll leave it then." So they had all these extra pies that he sells by the road. Now the reason I tell you all of that <laughs> is, what is being in an indie rock band that m makes their own records but a lost leader a way to lose lots of money very fast wow. and you're making your little pie and it costs you your uh, your record costs you so much money to rehearse record for, and press and you sell it at gigs and, and you know small independent record stores and it's basically you're never really going to make money doing it that way unless you have a massive hit so most bands I know were basically by the side of the road selling pies that were melting, if you know what I mean. Oh. So that's the whole origin of the name. <laughs> that I've is a great story. <laughs> that is a great story, and it is a great band name. But and, yeah, and I, I like it. And you did have a little bit of a hit. I it kind of I listened to uh, what was it? What? Wonder where you are tonight. Wonder where you are tonight. Which reminded yeah. me of the. Uh, like it was early nineties. Like when I first heard, like, oh, this sounds like the Posies. And then when you, you're ah, like, oh, sure. Yeah. They're like, okay, yeah. early 90s. That in the U.S., I was listening. That was what I was listening to. Was Dear 23 was one of my favorite albums from uh, that time. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, uh, I used to, and I used to love them. Yeah. I wish I knew about the gravel berries. I would have uh, gravitated to Yeah, we never, we never really had a big thing out, outside of the Canadian thing. We weren't even big in Canada, really. But, we, you know, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, where I'm wearing a T-shirt of, they, uh, they used to play it. But also a lot of uh, – a great station in the southern Ontario, the province – uh, Toronto-based radio station called CFNY used to play um, modern rock from England, uh, New York, and mostly Canada, and especially in the streets of Ontario, which was great. Spirit so of we, Radio. We were, yeah, Spirit of Radio. There you go. Mm -hmm. And they, they were very big, very big supporters of local music and a lot of bands who you like, well, the Bare Naked Ladies, for instance, won a contest from CFNY, and that's how they made and self-financed their first record with prize money from CFNY and then they sold that to Warner Brothers and then years later they had a hit in America with one week but um, but that's how they did it so CFNY was uh, I'll always tell people about CFNY because it was hugely influential the way maybe K-Rock is in LA or some other stations <laughs> I can't think of it or the way John Peel was in England you yeah. know yeah okay so is this uh, this is was this your station of choice this is what you listen to late nights and uh, all yeah. day <laughs> like I would listen. I actually had a day job, and I would I would make the uh, everyone in the office listen to CFNY, and they were really mad at me. So because they they wanted the station that played mostly um, uh, I don't know Paula Abdul. So this, and I was this, uh, yeah. yeah I was playing the modern rock station. This was not the station that everyone can agree upon at work. What? Well, you know they was... would until they didn't until they didn't and you know <laughs> until they heard something they didn't like. Yeah. You know? That was always in L.A. I think that was like like KBIG, the station everyone can agree upon at work. Yeah. <laughs> Your coast. Yeah, no, this wasn't yeah. that station. Yeah, that was yeah. not in Canada, clearly in Toronto. 
it was CKFM in Toronto. It was the station that's you know just the light classics. You know that whole thing. It's like, and I can't remember who the artists were now. I'm suddenly remembering John Sakata, uh, who like you'd hear on like CKFM. It would oh, be yeah. like you know, or the softest version of Lionel Richie, like all night long. You know, and like yeah. and, and you know that that was their most funky song. You know, <laughs> that was Coast 103 or K Baker, yeah. right? Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. 